By the time I turned 25, between my investment accounts and savings accounts, I had a net worth of $100,000. In this video, I'm gonna share how you can do it too. Charlie Munger said it best. The first 100K is going to be the toughest, but it's the most crucial for wealth building. And I'm under the belief as well that if you can get the first 100K out of the way, then you're well on your way to success. In this video, I'm gonna break down how you can do it too. And if you're in your late teens or early 20s, you may even be able to hit it before I did. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna explain how from 25 to 25 and a half, I was able to double that first 100K to now I'm sitting at about 200. Whether you're gonna to go to college or not, this path is going to differ a little bit, but you should end up with the same result either way. First things first, if you are going to college, pick a college where you can live at home and you can commute to campus instead of paying for student housing. That should cut the cost of college in half. And step two, even after you finish college, you should still live at home for as long as possible because this is going to allow you to maintain a savings rate of over 50% on average, whereas that's usually not going to be possible if you live on your own. Now, if you cannot live at home, or you're not comfortable with it, one other thing you could do is get an apartment with a few different friends. Maybe you get a three bedroom apartment, split the rent and the bills three ways. That's another way where you could achieve a similar result. Step number three, don't add any unnecessary debts. This definitely includes credit cards, but I'm talking about car loans as well. I drove a 2000 Honda that had oil leaks and issues every other month, but it was way cheaper than paying for a new car. Step four is going to be budgeting aggressively so you can save and invest as much as possible. And the best way that I've found to do this is by avoiding unnecessary expenses. By unnecessary expenses, I mean expensive vacations, buying new clothes and shoes all the time, going to eat at fast food restaurants when you could eat at home. These are some of the things that we can minimize, and I'm not saying not to live your life, but I am saying that we should focus on minimizing things that are not very important in order to shortcut getting to this goal we're trying to get to much sooner than the average. Step five is it's just gonna take some time. I had 13,000 when I graduated college. That was from working all the way from high school all the way till when I was out of college. I didn't really save too much during that time. That may be a lot or maybe a little bit, just depending on your situation. From 22 to 25, I was able to save up the remainder of that $100,000. I wouldn't be discouraged by time being a big factor because the time's going to pass anyways. So the only difference is whether you take the time to focus on budgeting and investing to make sure you are able to have a portfolio of that size or not. Once you are able to save your first 100,000, that's going to make a substantial difference in the compounding. For example, a 10% return on $100,000 is going to be 10,000, while on a $10,000 account, it's only going to be $1,000. Before we get into how I was able to double my money within a year after I got that first $100,000, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button and let's get into it. So I took that first $100,000. I found a property that was listed for $250,000 that I believed was well below market value, and I went and put a 20% down payment, and I had 2% in closing costs. In total, that added up to be $55,000. 50000 for the down payment, 5000 for the closing costs. I used the remaining $45,000 to do renovations so I could increase the overall property value. After renovations, each unit should rent for somewhere between twelve dollars and $1,300, which will bring the value of the property up to somewhere between $360,000 and $390,000, meaning that I'm all in for $300,000 after factoring in closing costs, the purchase price, and the renovation budget, which if the property appraises for even just $360,000, that's a nice gain. After subtracting the loan amount of $200,000 from the new appraised value of $360,000, that'll leave me with an equity position of $160,000. And at the same time of doing all these renovations, I was rebuilding my stock portfolio, took that back from zero back up to $45,000 and I have a Roth IRA sitting at $4,000. And after adding all of these up, we have $160,000 in equity in the property, $49,000 in stocks, which puts me at $209,000. And if I could leave you with something, it would be treat wealth building like going to the gym. It's not going to happen quickly. It's going to take some time, but if you stick with it, you'll love the results. 